The PlayStation 4 was a return to form for Sony after some questionable decisions with the PlayStation 3. The PlayStation 4 is one of the best selling systems of all time and still has games coming out for it even to this day. But that doesn't mean that the homebrew and emulator community has been sleeping on this system because if anything, well they've been working diligently. There is now a PlayStation 4 emulator out there and I decided that we should probably take a look at this because I mean, I'm the king of emulation, baby. Let's go. So today we're going to take a look at the latest PlayStation 4 emulator. We're going to look at how to set everything up. I'm going to walk you through it. And we're going to take a look at a little bit of performance as well. So if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's check out PlayStation 4 emulation in 2023 and see where it's at. Alrighty, so we're gonna set up a PlayStation 4 emulator right now on our PC. We're also gonna take a look at a game in terms of performance. I'm gonna walk you guys through it. It's a pretty simple process. Um, you have to download a couple different files that are available on GitHub. I'll have links to them in the description box down below. Everything but the game itself. Obviously, I can't show you where to get the game and stuff. The emulator itself is fine. The game itself is where problems start to arise. I'll also have a GitHub compatibility list in the description box down below. I mean, don't expect, expect to be playing like Bloodborne or anything on this. You know, it's pretty early in its development cycle. But just the fact that we're able to run anything on this, I feel is very impressive. I'm using my B-Link SER5 mini PC. This is the mini PC that I use for a lot of these things. And um, it actually works pretty good with uh, PlayStation 4 stuff at least thus far. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the files you need. Like I said, all these files are available in the description box down below over on GitHub. The first thing we're going to download is the FPPS4 launcher. So go ahead and download that. At the time of the filming of this video, it is on version 1.2.1. Then we're going to download the emulator itself, FPPS4, which is currently on version 0.0. .1. Not exactly the most advanced emulator yet, you know, obviously they're still working on things. We're going to download the libsce utilities file, and we're going to download the PKG editor, and the current version of this is 0.2.231.zip. Now, when you're downloading your games to play on PlayStation 4 or extracting your games, I should say, to play on the PlayStation 4 emulator, they need to be in PKG format. That's actually something that is mandatory. If you look around online at some different places, you'll probably notice that a lot of these things are in PKG format. Now, I'm gonna take these four folders here and go ahead and move them into one folder known as PlayStation 4, along with the Sonic Mania Plus ROM that we'll be using, or I should say PKG file that we'll be using for this. So we're gonna go ahead and extract these folders and open them up, get into the uh, files themselves because there is one thing that we will have to do with some of this stuff you could do it by any step it doesn't necessarily matter if you do it the, the way I do it but you know it just it makes it easier for for the sake of this video um, so go ahead and extract everything up extract this And then we're going to extract the PKG editor as well. Okay, so now we have all of our folders extracted. So what we need to do is, let me go ahead and bring this back up. We need to go ahead into the launcher file and add three different new folders to it. MU, lib, and games. Um, it is kind of case sensitive actually, so let me go ahead and change that for this because the games and lib work, but MU has to be EMU, capital E, lowercase m, lowercase u. Yes, I have tried this out before doing it. Like I didn't want to do a live playthrough of this and like it didn't even work and then I look like an idiot. So go ahead and add the MU file. Go ahead and add the lib file and go ahead and add the games file. 
so now that we have those things set up what we're going to do is we're going to go into the games file itself and we're going to make a folder for our new game which is going to be sonic mania you do have to make a folder for each individual game i'm not quite sure why it's just the way that this emulator is set up as far as the emu side of things is concerned we're going to take our folder that has the emulator itself which of course is fpps4 and we're going to take these files we'll go ahead and cut them and we'll throw them in here now we'll go back we'll go to the lib file and we'll go to our lib folder that we extracted some different things from and we'll go ahead and take that and we'll place it in here and then we're going to open up our pkg editor so what this is going to do is essentially take the file that we have with sonic mania plus and allow it to be in a readable format for our emulator so i, I i'm not going to sit here and act like i know sort of the back end of everything the the whys and hows of this but you know um just just do it like it's it's what you have to do so we're gonna go ahead and open up our folder here and go into here and you see we have our pkg sonic mania plus so i'm sorry i didn't really walk you through that you just hit file and then open so you know pretty pretty simple stuff there nothing nothing too groundbreaking and we're gonna take our folder it recognizes everything and we're going to export to g4 project now we're going to take this and we're going to want to put this where our game is so go ahead and open it up into sonic mania and then save it into there and it's going to export it honestly doesn't like take long at all like you know, there you go we've already exported it in there so hypothetically speaking if we've done everything correctly we should have a up and running and functioning PlayStation 4 emulator for our PC. So we're going to go back into the launcher here and we will open up the uh, launcher itself. And so here we go. We have a functioning PlayStation 4 emulator right now running on this. You could disable some different things, refresh the games list, various settings that you can do as well when it comes to where the folders and files and stuff are if for some reason your ps4 launcher the emulator itself ends up in a different folder you could select the file so that it goes into the right place but now we need to see if, if anything is working so we'll go ahead and click on our game here and we'll run p or fpps4 and my friends we have a fully functioning PlayStation 4 emulator on our PC right now. Now, like I said, there is a bunch of games that, that do not work. I don't even know if Sonic Mania works perfectly. It's just a less, you know, sort of taxing game for these systems to run. Obviously, we're still in the infancy of everything when it comes to emulators and whatnot. But I mean, I have a Xbox 360 controller that I have set up. I want to get into the gameplay itself so we can take a look at that, see how it's actually running. Um, it looks like it's it looks good. You know, it looks like it's it's running fine. A great game, by the way. Um, you know, some minor graphical things. You know, the graphics don't look nearly as crisp as they would on a PlayStation 4. Obviously, that's something that's going to come along in time. Also, we're running this on a essentially, you know, $400 or less mini PC. So I'm not expecting like the, the best performance in the world or anything like that. But just the fact that it's up running and, and functioning, like, I think that's pretty impressive here. You know, we're, we're not too far removed from the, I mean, there's still new PlayStation 4 games coming out. And obviously, you know, Nintendo Switch emulation is pretty far in advance, but Switch stuff, you know, really isn't all that super complicated in terms of comparison to you know playstation 4's architecture you know the tegra chip is something that's been around for a while you see we got some slowdown here but just the fact that we're even running it and we can obviously do some different you know settings to adjust things but i'm just fascinated by this you know the fact that we have 
a, a functioning PlayStation 4 emulator. The fact that you can actually boot up a game on it. And like I said, the game list itself isn't, you know, super impressive or anything like that. We're obviously still in very early stages as far as things are concerned with, you know, games. I'll have a list to the GitHub in the description box down below. But I feel like the groundwork is, is definitely there. You know, just the fact that we're able to run this game, maybe we can even do some different hacks on it, but I'm not really concerned about that right now. I didn't expect to be able to like play anything. And the fact that I had Sonic Mania actually playing the PlayStation 4 version of the game, mind you, I think that's very, very impressive. So let me know in the comment section down below if you have any thoughts on PlayStation 4 emulation. Where do you see PlayStation 4 emulation going as far as you know how far in advance you know where do you see it in a year what do you think we'll be able to run in a year make sure you guys check out the github for the compatibility list of games as well so that way you're not downloading games that have no chance of running on it and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button like comment and share hit the bell as well and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later